food. What I found about it, it's, it's like a Jamaican word. It's very clean. Drama. When I went in there, it was crazy. Chris had one job. Cookie fish, Chris. Verdict. It could go either way. Six countries send their best chefs to plead their case. Who will take home the 10,000 US dollars award? All rise for the Maggie Food Court Caribbean, season three. Previously on Maggie Food Court Caribbean, the kitchen is still reeling from the conclusion of the intense battles of the knockout rounds. In this episode, the court takes quick recess from the culinary trials of the region's best chefs to make way for the next generation. Student chefs from secondary and tertiary institutions in Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago have been invited to participate in a friendly cook-off and demonstrate the future of Caribbean cooking. Watch as our junior defendants plead their case for the inaugural Maggie Food Court Caribbean Schools title. Who from the next generation of culinary talent has what it takes to win the Maggie Food Court Caribbean? This culinary case is presided over by Maggie Food Court Judge, Jaron Geronimo Green. Our jury members are Business Executive Officer of Nestle Caribbean, Okino Petrie, Celebrity Chef, Adrian Fort, and Cooking Show Host from the Food Network, Roger Mooking. All right, Maggie Food Court is now in session. Presided over by Judge Geronimo. In this episode of Maggie Food Court Caribbean, we are taking an active break with Kit Kat and Milo. Eight of our future culinary master chefs will battle each other in groups of two, creating their dishes from our fridge and pantry using Milo and Kit Kat and a range of Maggie seasonings and spices. Who will win these recess trials? Let's meet the teens. Battle one, tertiary students, SBCS Global Institute from Trinidad versus the Hart Institute from Jamaica. Let's meet the student chefs from the Hart College of Hospitality in Jamaica. Hello, I am Rebecca Sivright. I am Daniel Buckner, a trainee. A student here at the Hart College of Hospitality Services. Doing a level two coming chef training. Being here is a stepping stone to my dream of becoming a successful executive chef. I've always had a passion for cooking, seeing that I love food. Nobody was going to cook it for me, so I decided why not learn about the culinary art. And we truly put our all into it because this is our passion. I think me and my teammate is the best because he has recently came second in world skills, so she has the experience and the know-how to beat the competition. And then I have the experience of working in a kitchen and the knowledge that I gather here and from the hotel, I can put all of those together. Even though it's a competition, we're in this together and we got this. We'd like you to know that we're number one for a reason. And for that reason, we'll beat all of you guys. We're coming. I'm Chef Daniel Buckner. Rebecca Sivret. And I'll be coming to the Maggie Food Court Caribbean. Let's meet the student chefs from SBCS Global Institute in Trinidad and Tobago. Hi, my name is Janiqua Franklin. My name is Darian Teutram. I'm a student here at Champlain. Student here at SBCS. Cooking has always been a passion for me. So when I was younger, I always liked cooking. I always watched my mom cooking. One of my first recipes that I learned was making Alfredo pasta from her. The way how we handle our kitchen, rather than just teaspoon and table so we just use our ancestors as we say. Hoping to move food on, opening a restaurant or being a head chef. Representing Trinidad and Tobago in Jamaica, I didn't think would happen. So we could really play it well. Flavor. Trinidad and Tobago is full of flavor. Our flavors are really good and way better than Jamaica. <laughs> All the best, do us well and make us proud. I know that you will be coming back with a winning smile. Darian Janiqua, you all know what to do. Relax, take your time, trust your training and you'll do fine. To the Jamaican team. Just know we're coming. Coming to Jamaica. To Maggie Food Court, Caribbean. Now, let's go to court. Chefs, welcome to Maggie Food Court. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Chefs. Daniel and Rebecca, chefs Janiqua and Darian, are you ready to cook? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. All right, so for this challenge, you'll have 90 minutes in which to create an entree and a dessert using Kit Kat as your secret ingredient. At the end of the trial, your dishes will be brought to a jury panel who will taste it, look at it, and then present a verdict. 
Your time for cooking starts right now. From the Jamaican team, there are a younger team. We have one of the participants, Daniel, he's 18. And we have Rebecca, she's 17. Wow. And then in Trinidad, we have Darion, he's 19. And Janaqua, who is about 21, I believe. So all going through my head was we were confident in the entree and dessert, but uh, I did not know that the main, main part was the Kit Kat. So with the challenge, we had to include Kit Kat. Kit Kat. So normally, it goes as a dessert. The Kit Kat was a surprise, first of all, because I wasn't expecting that we'd get the Kit Kats too, so I just had to come up with something on spot. Okay, so I'm liking this. You know, the Jamaican team, Rebecca and Daniel, are making a chicken supreme as one of the, the main elements of one of their two courses. And the Trini side there with Janiqua and Darian, they're apparently doing, right now for the entree, all they have is a potato mash, and they want to do some kind of Trinidadian coconut drops. While my partner, he was working on the creamy mashed potato, I started the salsa. We cut up all the ingredients, we incorporated it with salt and black pepper and a little cayenne pepper to give it the spice, and then we put it to the side. Uh, while he was still working on the potato, I started the coconut drops. You know there's actually a correct and an incorrect way to, to eat Kit Kat? There is? Yeah, yeah, and that way, well, we're all about sharing. So what we generally recommend is when you open the pack, you break it in half. So just in case somebody comes along, you have something to share. Well, good thing that is enough so I don't have to share. <laughs> <laughs> For the dessert, we had a papaya cake with a Kit Kat crust at the bottom and it was coated with a papaya rum sauce and topped with crushed nuts alongside a whipped cream with coconut chips. For the cream mashed potatoes, um, we boiled the potatoes, we added some butter, some cheese, salt, black pepper, garlic powder, as well as some regular milk. We mixed that up, then we tasted it to make sure it was perfect. All right, chefs, smelling good. Chef Danielle? Yes, Chef. There's something burning over here. Yes, Chef. So where's the Kit Kat? I'll come back to you. Chef Daria. Oh, your Kit Kat is out. Tell me how you're going to incorporate the Kit Kat. What are you making? We're making a chocolate ganache for this hot. A chocolate ganache. That sounds really nice, really delicious. You carry on. Let me find out what these guys are doing. Oh, okay, so your Kit Kat's in the blender. What are you making? I want to know. A papaya cake. A papaya cake. So where is the Kit Kat going in the cake? Oh, so you're using it as like a base, a little like a cheesecake, a little... Okay, I see, all right, I'll leave you to it. You don't have a lot of time left, so remember, the time's running, all right? So when time was running out, I was thinking how fast and how efficient can I make this without messing up the dish and just keeping everything, preventing it from burning out also. We weren't anywhere ready to plate all the dishes, meaning the entree and desserts. The Trinis are a little bit ahead of the game right now. They're almost done plating. The Jamaican squad is still coming up. I have a theory around this. I have a theory. So the Trinis operating with steel pan in the head. Right? The Jamaicans and them have The more they told us that um, less time was being available, um, my heart started racing because I'm like, oh, this is not done, that's not done, this is not done. But even though I was feeling nervous, I was trying to focus on finishing what I had to finish, even though we never get to do everything that we wanted to do. Chefs, you have five minutes remaining. Five minutes. Jamaicans are known for speed, so I think they're gonna execute in the end, you know? Oh gosh, the game boss! Oh, gee! We had like around 10 minutes to spare after we plated, but then we remembered that we had to put our sauce. <laughs> so we had to go back and quickly do our sauce and garnishes. We had a tough challenge. Three, two, one. All right, chef, so your time for cooking has expired. Wow. You guys really did a number on this one. How do you feel about your dish? What's Team up? Trini. What's up? You feel good. Team Jam Down, what are you saying? Tell me how you feel about this. 
Feel all right, sir. Feel all right. You feel all right, just all right? Yes, sir. All right, so we're going to present your dishes to the jurors so that they can taste your flavors and then come to a verdict. All right. It's time to present the dishes to the jury. All right, chefs, tell us about your dish. Okay, so today for our entree, we have creamy mashed potato um, alongside a pan said salmon topped with a papaya salsa and a sweet and spicy honey glaze. And what is this uh, dessert you have on the side? For our dessert, we decided to go with a Trini style coconut drop and it's paired with a chocolate ganache. That big coconut drop boy. <laughs> oh God. All right, thank you, chef. Yeah, it's very flavorful. Seasoned well. I'm loving this papaya salsa. It's adding like a nice sweetness. The fish really is cooked perfect, man. Look at that, look at that thing. I think they maybe can graduate after today. Time for dessert. It's kind of like a cookie. Nice crunch on the outside, tender on the inside, coconutty. When them this drop on it, this we imagine. Same, I was thinking about Jamaican type of drops. Yeah, I think this was a good attempt. Let's welcome the next institution. So right here we have for you guys, stuffed Akan Red Orin Chicken Supreme, served with um, a palm puree, garlic palm puree, and a pumpkin puree. Also, on the side is some steamed veg um, in coconut milk, Maggi coconut milk. And the uh, dessert? The dessert, we have a papaya key with a Kit Kat base at the bottom, um, topped with a papaya rubber sauce and crushed nuts, alongside whipped cream with coconut treats. In the Jamaican hole, usually we try and do use every kind of fruit to make a cake. Use any little thing to create something beautiful. So I decided to carry that from home. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Hope you share. Thank you too. All right, let's dig in. Mmm. The ake and red orange stuffing adds a nice smoky element to the jerk chicken. They're representing the island from where they are coming from most. Perhaps we can explore the dessert. You're both Jamaicans. You ever had papaya cake? No. This is a, this is a new one for me. Never. Why well, she put rum in there? I think it's time for us to deliberate. In terms of flavor profile, for me, I really enjoyed the inventiveness of the red herring stuff eating with the jerk. Really good. Although I preferred the Trinidadian's mash, it's seasoned better. And then the next course, I think, where the Kit Kat would, you know, naturally be the star of your dish. I felt like the first team maybe incorporated it a little bit better. But I really absolutely love that jerk chicken supreme dish. I think it's, it's very, very close and it's going to come down to maybe the dessert. All right, I think we've reached a decision. Bailiff? Chefs! So you were given a challenge to create your very best entree and dessert using Kit Kat as the star ingredient. You both did a splendiferous job. You nailed it. Team Jamaica, your innovation with stuffing the chicken with ackee and red herring shows that you are, you're, not, you're not amateurs. You're culinary masters. Team Trini, that salmon didn't only bring the flavors, but it was cooked perfectly. So, you both made a perfect entree. Let's talk about your desserts. They also demonstrated who you are. The story behind your papaya cake. Team Trini, you executed that coconut drop simply beautifully. In the end, it had to come down to who incorporated Kit Kat, better, only one team can win this challenge. The team who won this challenge is Team Trini. Congratulations. Very, very well cooked, Chef. I feel disappointed. This brings out a more learning experience and more challenge in the culinary field. I feel really relieved. Team Jamaica, they did really well. Um, to my teammate, Jenny Kwa, we pulled through. We made our country proud. 
Battle 2 Secondary Students Queen's High School vs. Irwin High School Let's meet the student chefs from Queen's High School and Irwin High School in Jamaica Student chefs from secondary and tertiary institutions in Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago have been invited to participate in a friendly cook-off and demonstrate the future of Caribbean cooking. Watch as our junior defendants plead their case for the inaugural Maggie Food Court Caribbean Schools title. Who from the next generation of culinary talent has what it takes to win the Maggie Food Court Caribbean? The secondary school students of Jamaica face off in a fierce culinary battle for a spot in the inaugural Maggie Food Court Caribbean Schools title finals. Irwin High School and Queens High School come out on top, earning themselves the opportunity to try their case in the Maggie Food Court. Now, let's go to court. The students have 90 minutes to create any two dishes using Milo. Go. The moment I entered the kitchen, we were standing there, they came out, they told us what to do, and they told us begin. I was like, I was standing there for a second begin and then I walked I grabbed everything that I needed and they, they, they're doing the thing man I feel very confident actually in this one I was excited to enter the room at first but when I started to prepare the meal I got nervous I started crying so we prepared a tough baked fish with kalaloo. The filling was kalaloo with carrots, with jerk seasoning and salt. And it was stuffed in the fish with butter. And on top we had garlic, pepper, um, some of the sweet pepper. I didn't even realize until I saw them two putting the tape on her finger and I was like, oh my gosh, Jessica, you got to cut on your finger? And she was like, yeah. And I really didn't feel anyway. We were like, just move on past it because it's life. In life, you're going to fall, but you just have to know that you have to get back up. I was feeling in that moment that it, this was my battle scar. I felt okay. I didn't feel bad. I was like, okay, this is what it came with. So we made an entree and an uh, appetizer. The appetizer was the coconut flakes with shrimp. Alright, so we had the flour, the egg, the coconut milk, with a little mild um, the powder. We add water to that and add it to the egg. Appetizer was the coconut flakes with shrimp, um, with Irish mango salsa. All right, chefs. Seems a little busy in the kitchen, all right? Yeah? Chef Hannah, what, I see you have four, is that snapper? Yes. Yeah, what, what are you making? Tell me about your dish. Um, oven roasted fish. Oven roasted fish, mm -hmm. It's going to be stuffed with kalaloo. Kalaloo, oven roasted fish stuffed with kalaloo. What are you serving that with? Mashed potato. Mashed potatoes. And uh, the pumpkin. The pumpkin. Chef Loriana, what's, what's going on over here? Tell me, I see chicken breast all seasoned. I see you have some peppers over there. You're throwing in some flour. What are you making? Is that a dessert? Um, no, I'm making the coconut flake, the coconut flakes shrimp. Oh, you're making shrimp battered with coconut flakes. Oh, that's nice. And you're, I see chicken breast though. What, what are you doing? Yes, stuffed chicken breast. So if you need my help with anything, chefs, you just call me, all right? And I'll come and help you. Appetizer was the coconut flakes with shrimp, um, with Irish mango salsa. So they have to create an appetizer and an entree using Milo in a savory application. Yeah. Fresh up. Soup, soup. So I had to change my dish completely. So I changed it from sweet potato to Irish potato and pumpkin. And we pureed it. And it came out quite great. I like the color and everything. Uh, coconut sauce, 
Ooh. for the steak and a plantain Milo smoothie. Hey. Don't throw it. Hey, boy. I did not enjoy the plating process because one, time was short. Two, the potato was not coming out of the piping bag. Three, I was hurried by a partner. Four, I was nervous and crying. Empty. You need to tap it by him. And check for what you take for. Tap it by him. Come on. Just <laughs> we garnish our dishes, we took out everything, we make sure we have everything on the plate. Three, two, one. All right, young master chefs, your time for cooking has expired. Queens, let us take your dishes to the jury for adjudication. You're looking good though. How do you feel about it? Uh, I did well. We did good. But there's a but. What's the but? This part, which was our main part of it, I think there could have been more. I think you did an awesome job, awesome job. But let's hear what the jurors think, all right? All right, chefs Brianna and Loriana, you did a good job here. How do you feel about this dish? Tell me how you feel about it. After all your hard work, it looks looking good. How do you th feel about it? Not confident. You're not confident in it? Why not? I think it looks amazing. But the final decision is up to the jury. So I'll present your dishes now to the jury for the final verdict. It's time to present the dishes to the jury. All right, chefs, tell us about your dish. So the dish that we prepared is roast fish. And we have our salad that contains lettuce, carrot, and the cherry tomatoes we have and sauce for the salad and we also have a sauce for the fish if you sure. like it's coconut sauce for our shake it's plantain shake with milo and for the decoration of it we use honey to let the granulated sugar stick to the top all right thank you chefs all right we got a big feast here so let's dig in man they make plantain taste like banana i don't want to say this out loud too much but they cook better than some of the other people. <laughs> <laughs> Who making money? <laughs> the kalaloo and the coconut. Oh my God. Everything on the place is delicious. Last thing nice, man. Mm. That don't taste like plantain at all. All right. I think it's time. We welcome Erwin Hai. All right, chefs. Tell us about your dish. For the apple salads that we made, I remember salsa with coconut flakes shred and we add a little bit a twist to it so we add milo in the buttering for the shred. Alright, thank you chefs. Alright fellas, let's dig in. I think the plate has a nice blend of color. You notice how they tied it nicely? Well, the shrimp tastes good. Alright guys, I think it's time for us to deliver it. I think we take the approach in this one that we looked at the meal in general. Queens did end up doing a, a stuffed snapper and Erwin did a stuffed chicken, both with Kalaloo. So I, I mean, it was a very even playing field. Both meals were delicious. Yeah, and I mean, in terms of the Milo, they both incorporated it in their dish well. It was creative what they did with the shrimp and also what they did with the smoothie. So I think it's time to call in the bailiff. Bailiff, we're undecided. Well, according to the Maggie Rule book, Whenever there's an undecided decision by the jury, both contestants or both teams will walk away with equal prizes. I think we are in agreement. That sounds reasonable to me given what we ate. I'm cool with that. Chefs, 
chefs Lorian and Brianna, chefs Jessica and Hannah. So you were both tasked with creating two dishes which incorporated Milo. You were given a lot of ingredients and you cooked your heart out. The jurors deliberated for quite some time and presented an undecided verdict. So in light of that, guess what? You'll both be walking away with prizes. Next time on Maggie Food Court Caribbean, our six winning chefs from the knockout rounds will be split into teams of three and must prepare a three-course meal in a three versus three battle royale.